Trying to do 17 things, which is pretty normal. Okay. Um, what is the status? Hello. Um, hello. Okay, let me. Oh, what am I doing? Fixing my sound. Okay. I know I'm kind of at a weird time, so there'll probably be like no one watching, but I, um, why isn't this working? I'm so confused. I'm so confused. Okay. Well, forget it. I was trying to do something else, but it didn't work. Hello. I tried so hard to talk to you last night in my video, but I had my four wild children running around and my husband who according to some lady is abused and <laughs> unloved gosh it's funny one of the things that i didn't expect when i started sharing my life on social media which in general is sharing my life on social media I didn't plan on doing that but because no one ever thinks that anyone's ever going to watch or care or like when I, when I pressed publish on my first post, I never thought that I would have anyone that would listen to me or, or care about our family. So it's, it's funny how that happens. But secondly, there are people who love, there are certain people who love a different member of my family, like just fiercely. So like there's people that just are like, Cooper's great, but I just love Sawyer. Or there's people like my friend Rosemary that's like, I love all your kids, but that Harbor, he's my, you know, my favorite. And, um, and I've like had weird things happen with that. Like one time years ago, years when I first started sharing, my parents, flew back from Texas and my husband went to pick up the bump from the airport with Sawyer. And so like they greeted Sawyer at the airport and, you know, loved him up and hugged him and rode in the car with him. And so when they got back, I took a video of them greeting Cooper and shared it. And people were like, Sawyer is so abused. He's not loved. Why doesn't your family love him? It's so depressing to see his, you know, and I was like, settle down. Like you're seeing three minutes of this. It's already happened. You know, it's just interesting what people choose to see. And there is like a f fierce, fierce group of women that love my husband and think that he is so much better than me. And, um, that I am just trash and he is the top. And what's really funny about that is if you step back and think about that, everyone that watches me only sees what I share. So let me think about, so let's think about that. Like, would I ever share something that makes someone in my life look bad? Nope. Would I ever share something that makes my husband look unfavorable? Nope. So therefore, everything, hi Jan, everything that you see is him being the perfect husband. So it's so funny. So last night, like someone just like went after me. I just finally blocked her. Like she just like came after me and she's like, <sighs> And my husband just eats it up. Like he is like, I'm best. I just, I laugh so hard. I laugh so hard. Like if people, like we're, we're just like a normal family. Our life is not perfect. Marriage is hard. We, I'm actually going to Google marriage counselors. Actually, I'm going to call health partners, my insurance company, and find out which marriage counselors are covered because I can't afford to pay for it out of pocket. 
It's like, it's so weird. It's so weird. I don't, I don't know. Like, also, there's like a really nasty review, not about my book, but on Amazon on my book, about how Jamie is completely gaslighting me. And like, that's what, when they read my book, like that's what they read was that he, and I'm like, whoa, you really saw this and went here. It's bizarre. It's very bizarre. But I don't know. I get it. Jamie gets a really big kick out of it when people, when he's a typical man. So I'm just going to tell you, he loves, loves attention. He just is, uh, loves when people are like, Oh, Jamie, you poor Jamie. He just gets a kick out of that. Drives me freaking bonkers. I tell you. Yeah, you should praise Jamie for staying with you. Oh my gosh. Like, are you kidding me? Who says that to someone? It's so weird. Like, I can think of people in my life where I can be like, that person's a lot of work. And that person that's with them is a saint. But I would never say that to him. Like, to them, like, I can think of some people, people close in my life, and I'm like, love you, but you're a lot of work. Your husband is a saint. Uh, I, but I don't say that to them. Because why? <laughs> Someone shared something, maybe it was like on a teacher website, or actually maybe it was Adrian. My friend Adrian, who said, I think it was Adrian, and she's like, I teach my children... To not say things that like don't matter. So let me explain it. It sounds silly, but like, she's like, instead of saying like, oh, you got your hair cut. Don't say, it's not going to work. Is it going to come back? Oh, speaking of husbands, now I'm going to have to hold on. I'm going to do not disturb him. Okay. Back. My husband. But she was like, she's taught her kids to like not say things that just don't add any relevance to the conversation. Like, like I have like number of people that say, oh, your poor dog. Why? Been married 44 years and I tell my hubby every day, thank you for being in my life. That's lovely, Susan. That's really nice of that you do that. That's really nice. You know, I think we're, um, maybe I do that too, but I wouldn't share it online. <laughs> like people don't expect, do people like expect me to like come online and be like, this is my husband, Jamie. Thank you, Jamie, for being in my life. I couldn't live without you or function without you. You are the best human in my life. Like who talks like that? Like people talk like that. Not, not you, Susan, but I'm just saying, like, in general, like, so weird. Like, I don't know. Bizarre. Bizarre. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to, last night I was trying to just, just explain to you, I share a lot of, um, you know, really about the beautiful parts of autism. That's, that's really want, where I want to land. This book that's coming out is really about the beautiful parts of autism. We're in some hard parts right now. Um, we're in some really hard parts right now. And I don't always talk a lot about that. And I think sometimes I can alienate people because I'll have people say to me, you know, you're glossing over severe autism. You're pretending that it's not hard, which isn't true at all. If you're my supporter, you know that. I share a lot. But I... We're in a really... We're in a tough period right now. And I think... The thing with that that I find extra challenging about autism is that I can't point to what's causing it. Like I can't – so like with Sawyer. Sawyer got very upset on Saturday because he did not make the baseball team that he had hoped to make. He found out. 
He got very upset. We talked about it. He's fine. Um, Harbor is very excited and anxious about his birthday. We have been counting down his birthday for 11 months. His birthday is on the 9th. His party is on the 20th. We talk about it all day long. Birthdays, birthdays, birthdays. I know what's causing him to be anxious. It's his birthday. With Cooper, I have never been able to pinpoint. Never. Uh, oh, everyone's asking about my sweatshirt. This sweatshirt is from Little Rebels for a cause, with a cause. It's my favorite. She has these for sale right now. Y'all go order it. It is the cutest sweatshirt. I can take them after. So autism to me with Cooper as he's getting older feels like this just constant mystery. So it's like, is he anxious about, is he anxious about riding the Amtrak? Is he sad and scared about his friend being in the hospital? Is it puberty? Is it just a new part of autism? And we don't know. Like we, we just like cannot figure out what is causing this, this, this rise in OCD and rise in anxiety. And my friend Rachel sent, she was watching me the other day and she sent me a, um, an article about OCD and severe autism and puberty. Like, great. Okay. I mean, cause there's no, there's no, um, help for puberty. You got to go right through puberty. Let's be honest. We all went through it. Now imagine being non-speaking. So his OCD is just coming out of nowhere and it, it's really driving Jamie more batty than me. And my husband's not wrong. It, it's very frustrating. It is very frustrating to live with someone with OCD. It's very frustrating to share and have people say things like, stop letting him control your life. We're not. We're not letting him control our life. We're trying to navigate a life alongside autism. And let me tell you, it's not, there's no answers. There's no book. There's no one to tell you what to do. There's no... And the way I describe it to my supporters, and, and I think this is just a really good way of describing it. You know, imagine you have a balloon. And every day it gets like the tiniest bit bigger. Until it's so big. And all of a sudden you're like, well, how did this happen? How did this happen? How do we, now we can't have anything in our living room and we can't have anything in our cupboards and we can't have anything, we can't set anything on this table. And someone from the outside peering in is like, well, how did you let that happen? Just tell him no. If anyone thinks, so please just, if you think that it was as simple as telling him no, and that we're not, please just, you got to just believe me. I talk about, believe me. Believe me that we're doing everything we can. Believe me that we're trying. Believe me that we're trying to, to make this make sense. It's like, I don't know how we got here. A week ago, we weren't here. Three days ago, we weren't here. And now, all of a sudden, I, I can't have anything in my living room. <laughs> it's just, it's just so, it's just, autism is unlike anything that I've ever experienced in my life. The, the, comp, the challenging parts of autism. And I would also say the beautiful parts. I mean, the beautiful parts are unbelievable. I did a video with Cooper yesterday. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. It, it just, I did it yesterday. You can just scroll back. He's sitting with me and we're chatting and it is just the most beautiful, wonderful, 
a thing. And, and, and I, I sat there and I, yes, Amy, I sat there and I was sitting with him and I was like, I am the luckiest person in the world because I get this boy who has shown me all the blessings in this world. Like I am the luckiest person alive. I truly believe it. And then I'm like, this is so hard. This is so hard. And I just, I've often said that like autism is like um, being in a long hallway. There's a long hallway and there's all these doors and you go up to the door to go in and they slam it and you go up to the door and they slam it. So it's like, do we change meds? Is something wrong at school? Is it because his friend's sick? How do I get him to communicate? It's like door slam, door slam, door slam. Like, I don't think, you know, honestly, truly honestly, I don't know if we've ever figured out any mystery of autism. We've just learned to grab its hand and just keep going. I, I did a, a video with my friend Amanda this morning. She's having a retreat uh, in um, the end of October in Kentucky, and I'm going. Um, um, and um, my friend Amanda has a son who, or excuse me, a brother who's in his 40s who has a disability. And she was talking about at the stage of life that they're in because her brother's 40. Right now, and I wrote it down, our family is prioritizing Nick's happiness. And so what that means is, and now I'll speak for her, is they're past trying to teach him new skills. They're, they're past, I, I'm assuming, trying to get him to use a speech device and past trying to do this and this. They're, they're settling into the middle years of life. And they've realized what so much of us are coming to realize is that it's about prioritizing happiness. That is truly what it is about. And with Cooper, I, I, I just want you to imagine something. I want you to imagine something. Imagine inherently who you are. You like salty foods and you like going to bed early and you like warm blankets and you don't want to be around people and just think of who you are all the parts that make up make you up and thinking of myself like all the parts of who I am when a person has a disability like Cooper the goal by so many is to change them think about that it's true. I don't know how anyone could argue with it. The goal is to make them different so they fit into the world. And some of it's some of it's like to do with safety. So of course we need this and communication and we need this so we can we can know they're safe and they can, you know, tell us things. But some of it's like just trying to change who they are and what they like. Like one of Cooper's goals for so long was teaching him to play. And Cooper doesn't want to play. He doesn't want to play. And like, I can see like just countless therapists, like trying to teach him to like move a car and teach him to like stack blocks and teach him to color. And like, he doesn't want to do those things. He's 13 and he still doesn't want to do those things. So think about, you know, being 40, like Amanda's brother and people like me, my age and someone telling me that I, I can't sit with eight blankets on the couch and I can't watch three iPads of Thomas the train. And the goal after, you know, it's like safety, communication, these important parts, right? But we have to make sure happiness is in there. We just, we just have to, we have to make sure happiness is in there. And I see so many parents of these younger kids. And I'm going to tell you, I probably did this too, where it's like, we have to change this. We have to change this. We have to make them like this. We have to do this. I probably did it too. I'm not perfect. 
but it needs to be happiness too. And I don't want to change who Cooper is. Cooper's a really awesome dude. He's funny and he's smart and he's loving and he's silly and he's exhausting and he's all the, all the parts. And so what I'm trying to do as a mom, and, and I don't have the right answers all the time, but what I'm trying to do as a mom is, am I trying to change who he is? Is happiness at the center of why I'm doing this? Can our family live alongside this? That's another important one too. OCD is really hard to live alongside. I don't know. I don't, I don't know enough about it yet. I'm going to have to talk to this, the child psych. I don't know. Ah, this is hard. We're exasperated. We're exhausted. Does Cooper feel good when he has OCD? I don't know. I don't know if he does. I don't know. I don't know. So to come full circle, autism is the most confusing thing that I have ever walked alongside. And the, all I can do is let him be himself and make sure he's happy. So, um, it's just, <coughs> we're going through a hard time. We are going through a really hard time and, and I don't know the answer. So we are going to just keep plowing forward. Cooper is really excited about going on this train ride. And I think that's a big motivator for him, but it's a fine line of, is it motivating or is it causing anxiety right now? I think we're still motivating. I think we're still in a good place. We're still in a good place. Um, I want to bring him joy. I'll tell you something absolutely adorable last night. Cooper has, he's 13 and he has adamantly always refused to wear headphones. I tell you, he refuses to wear headphones, I think, because he's so dang nosy. He's so nosy. He's listening to everything we're saying. If he wears headphones, he can't be nosy. And it's just a good reminder that your kids are always listening, even if they're not speaking. So remember that they're always listening and internalizing what you're saying. I've changed a hundred percent the way I talk around Cooper, um, a hundred percent. And, um, so last night we were talking about the Amtrak and talking about going to Chicago and we said, you know, buddy will probably only stay in Chicago one night because, there's just not a lot we can do. You know, we can't really go to a restaurant because he won't wear headphones. And that's just one of the reasons. But he immediately pulled up a video that said, wear headphones, wear headphones. And I looked at him and I was like, where do you want to wear your headphones? And then he wrote on his speech device, restaurant. I was like, you little stinker. So then he had me write it on his piece of paper and he asked me for a pair of headphones. I am telling you, I mean, wearing headphones isn't the answer to all of our problems, but if we can get him to wear headphones, we will be able to do so many more things. And so he's never been willing to try. Now, if we put them on him, will he do it? I don't know, but we can try and we can start with one minute. And we can go to two minutes and we can go to 10 and 15. Ooh, I've never seen him even like remotely be willing to try. So i um, super, super excited about that. I just cannot wait. I mean, we probably have a dozen pair of headphones here with all of our kids. So I have to like find a pair, dig them out, and then we'll just start practicing. Cooper works really good with timers, so he understands time. So we'll set a timer and we'll start with one minute and two. Maybe we can even start higher depending where he's at. But it was like, I've never seen that click, that cl correlation ever, ever in 13 years where it was like, 
Cooper, if you want to go to Chicago, we're going to, and we were, you know, just kind of just, just like boldly talking, like we're going to want to go eat at a restaurant and you're going to have to wear headphones. And if you can't do it, then we will do something, you know, we'll do something different. And so he was like, I want to go to a restaurant. And then like, he was like me. So, um, so cool. I think it'll be really cool if we could, and that, and, and to give hope to the younger kids, parents of younger kids, because I always wanted hope. I will tell you age 10 and 11 is when we, Cooper really started getting, uh, more willing to try like, Oh, I don't know why it's doing that. Um, how did I do that? How did that happen? I don't know how that happened. <laughs> that was way really funny. But I would say 10 and 11 is like when he was more willing to try. So like prior to that, like he would have, this is an example. Never in 1 million years prior to age 11 would Cooper have taken a bite of, I'm going to just say hamburger helper. I'm making that up. Or um, noodle casserole. Never. 1 million years. He would have died before doing it. Now I can be like, I really just want you to try one bite. Really, let's try one bite. Just one. If you don't like it, you don't have to have any more. And he'll try one bite. Not vegetables. No. He will fake his own death before trying a vegetable. But there's just things that he's like more willing to try. And I never, I just, just to give hope to these parents of younger kids that are in super, the super, you know, rigid, rigid, rigid. I get it. I never. Cooper does things every day that I never thought were possible. And they may be small, like tiny, but it's still something, you know. It's crazy. It's just crazy. Okay, I got to go run a bunch of errands. My two boys had, um, this is my first day alone in like two weeks. Um, so I get to run errands today. So my my, my Middle two had school photos today, so we went to and got them clothes for a new shirt. They each got a new shirt for last night. And then Winnie has photos on Thursday, so I want to get her a new dress. I'm going to run to, I think, Gap and H&M and see if they have something. I have to... I am having a heck of a time with one of Cooper's medications, and if you follow me closely, you know that every month I have a heck of a time with Cooper's prescription. It's just, oh my gosh. Um, Cooper has a medication where it comes in like a pen and you squeeze it and Harbor was sitting on the counter and Harbor thought that it was a Nerf gun and squished it and the medicine went everywhere and they won't let me get just one. They won't let me buy one. They won't give me one. They won't give me another prescription. And I just want to scream. I just want to scream. So he's going to go a week without his med. And I just don't know how that can be the answer in 2024. Does anyone else ever feel like this? Like, remember that hallway with doors slamming? It's like, I just want to scream. And I, when Harbor did that, and Harbor's like the most precocious person ever. You can say naughty, whatever you want to say. But like, he was like, oh, a Nerf gun. I cried. I cried. I just like, and Lauren was here and like, she's like, are you okay? And I was like, I just, I can't, I know people have bigger problems than me, so please know that, but it's like, I just cannot fight for this medication anymore. I don't even know if it's worth, I don't even know if it's worth, I don't know. I'm just tired tired. Before I had Cooper, I've said this like in every lie before I had Cooper, I thought like everyone just went to the doctor and everyone just got their medications and you just, life was just easy. I thought every kid just went to school and I thought every kid had a bus to ride and every, like, it's like, I didn't know. And Adrian and I were talking about this last night and I know if you don't live it, you don't understand it. And you probably think I'm whining, but I'm really not. I'm just being honest. Like everything with Cooper is a fight. Like it's like, 
my really good friend texted me today and she's like, I have an IEP meeting for my son today. I just hate these days. And I was like, I know, I know. And she's like, it's so much harder in middle school. I'm like, I know it is. It's so much harder. And she's like, I'm just dreading it. And like, I've never with, with Sawyer and Herber, I've never dreaded anything. They just go to school. It's like, it's just went to school, you know? It's so different. It's so different. Oh, I was so naive, Don, before autism. I was so naive. I read a comment today on my post and it was like, quit whining about the future. Your son will live on Medicaid and be cared for for the rest of his life. And I like saw red. I was like, are you, I mean, I could have, I'm not a swearer, but I could have like laid into this woman and just let her have it. But she had it. So I couldn't comment back to her. That's not true. That's not true. If I want Cooper to live just on social security and Medicaid, Cooper is going to be in a very bad situation. You know, Cooper needs money to live off of. So, you know, we're planning for our retirement and his. Um, if you want your children to have any extras, like any extras, if you want them to have internet and an iPad and blankets and that they love and go to a movie, you have to put money aside. You have to have someone involved to watch their care, to manage their meds, to like all the parts. Like it's like, did I think that though? Like, did I think, and I've talked to many, many, many adults with disabilities that live and they're like, this one young woman named Judy, I'll just tell you a story about her. I did a class with her and she had a, um, a, there was an accident that happened and she needed to change her clothes. And she's like, I don't have any other clothes. And she's like, I have to wait until next month to buy. And like, so speaking of my sweet, wonderful husband, I was with her. So I had Jamie go to Target and buy her some clothes. And, and I'm not saying this for a thing, for a praise. That's not why I'm saying this is that like, I want Cooper to have the clothes that he wants. Like I don't want him to ever suffer. You know, I want him to have the soap that he wants. And so I guess I'll just tell you before I had Cooper and before I had a person with a disability in my life, I just assumed everything was on a silver platter. They have it easy. Please no, they don't. I mean, they don't. They don't, they don't. Okay. I am going to call my husband back, my wonderful husband back, and um, go on with my day. So thank you all for being here. I put a link for my supporter group. It's, you know, I talk about it on every video. If you're looking for a place, click that link and come join us. Try it out for a month. Okay. Bye.